one. Aloha, aloha mai kako, and welcome to today's March 12th, 2021, 1 p.m. AEN committee hearing, including the audio and video of remote participants, as well as being streamed live on YouTube. Uh, you'll also find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website at capital.com. I'm Mike Gabbard, the AEN chair, and the other members of the committee are Vice Chair Clarence Nishihara and also Senators Laura Ocasio, Carl Rhodes, and Kurt Favela. Few housekeeping announcements uh, in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1.15 p.m. on March 15th during our AEN via video conference time slot and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Uh, for testifiers, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. And because of our 90 minute time limit for each of the AEN hearings, there will be a two minute time limit for all testifiers and we'll have a virtual countdown timer on the Zoom screen. So please be aware of the timer. I'll be announcing only the testifiers who will be providing testimony via Zoom. And so for the complete list of testifiers, along with all of the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website and you'll find a link on the status page for the measure. Uh, we apologize if the closed captioning doesn't accurately transcribe the names. So let's get started. We have two bills and four resolutions on our 1 p.m. agenda. And the first one is House Bill 817 HD2 relating to agriculture requires each state department to ensure that a certain percentage of the produce purchased by that department is locally grown and report to the legislature on each department's progress toward meeting locally grown produce benchmarks. And let's see, first up on testifier lists, we have Phyllis Shima Bokuro Geyser from Department of Ag. Aloha Chair and members of the committee, the department stands on its written testimony, but we appreciate the intent of the measure and we defer to those departments with long, uh, large food service programs. Thank you. Thank you Phyllis for the comments. And by the way, uh, viewers, we have 21 uh, testifiers in support, none in opposition, and only one comment. Uh, Jeremy Koki from the Department of Education. Hi, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. It's Jeremy Koki with the Office of Facilities and Department of Education. Uh, we stand on our written testimony in support of the intent of this, of this bill. Thanks for the opportunity to testify. Mahalo, Jeremy. Next is Brian Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihar, members of the committee. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll stand on a written testimony in support, Chair. Thank you. Mahalo, Brian. Uh, Mike Munikata from the Mika Munikata from the Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihara, and members of the committee. Mika Munikata here on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative. Just uh, wanted to stand on our written testimony in support. Um, we do have a couple of amendments for consideration, Chair, regarding some definitions to be added to this particular measure and. Um, also, uh, tightening up some of the goal language um, will be available for any questions. Thank you. Hello, Micah. Lady Bernal from the Hawaii Farm to School Hui, Hawaii Public Health Institute and Obesity Prevention Task Force. Aloha Kako. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. My name is Lady Bernal, coordinator of the Hawaii Farm to School Hui, and testifying, as you mentioned, on behalf of Hawaii Public Health Institute and Obesity Prevention Task Force. We support this bill. And we wanna just urge uh, the Senate to consider the fact that Hawaii Department of Agriculture, um, I believe should be continue to be a hub for helping to coordinate and support this work. It's a very big task ahead to involve all state agencies. And um, we greatly appreciate the legislature's support for farm to school as well as farm to state, which this bill addresses. Thank you. Mahalo, Lady. Next is Nicole Galasse from the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihara, and members of the committee. 
Nicole Galassi with the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. We stand on our testimony and support. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. And then also yeah. Meredith Buck, an individual. Hello, my Kako. My name is Meredith Buck. I live in Kribo, Kona. And yes, I'm just testifying as an individual. Um, I want to stand on my testimony, my written testimony, and also add that, you know, I'm a teacher in some of the public schools, and there's a, a lot of really great legislation coming up this, uh, this yeah. term, uh, trying to increase the local food production and encourage that. And so I think that 817 is a really great addition to that and can, uh, yeah, be a, a really great spearheaded spearheading the movement towards uh, food sovereignty and uh, climate resilience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Meredith. And that's it for the testifiers. Members, are there any questions for our testifiers? I have a question for Micah Munakata from Ulupono. Good afternoon, Chair. Hey, Micah, could you just elaborate on your suggested amendments for this measure? Yeah, sure thing. Um, we were just looking to add um, a line after the percentage point that is adding a level of measurement to how you define uh, 30%, 40%, 50% of what is local. And so what we're rec recommending is adding the, the, the language to read as measured by the cost cost. So that when you're providing a meal, um, you're judging it as a whole, as opposed to just identifying certain categories and then um, going from there, from that standpoint. Um, also, um, some of the definitions we're adding in um, is just to clarify, I guess, what what's read as produce in the current version of the bill. We do think that that covers the fresh side. Um, and so we would almost want to kind of split the fresh away from the value added in process side. Um, we understand that providing these meals as fully fresh is not always attainable at times. However, there is a lot of local product that is put um, into processed foods at times. So just sort of differentiating the two. Um, and when you have it listed as local processed or local value added, you have a primary ingredient that's attached to it. And that primary ingredient must be local. So this actually mirrors um, similar language that exists within the Department of Agriculture's seal of quality program, um, which is considered the cream of the crop when you have to identify a local product here within the state. So just looking to tight up, tighten up some of those language um, and it. definition things. All right, thank you, Micah. Yeah. Anyone else? Moving on to the next measure, HB 871HD1 relating to ag enterprises authorizes the Department of Ag to plan, design, construct, operate, manage, maintain, repair, demolish, and remove infrastructure on any lands under the jurisdiction of the department to support and promote agriculture. Establishes the Agricultural Enterprise Program, establishes the Agricultural Enterprise Special Fund, and it requires the Board of Ag to annually report on accounting of non-ag park lessees to the legislature. First testifier we have up is Phyllis uh, Shimabu-Hurgeiser from Department of Ag. Phyllis. Mahalo, Chair. Uh, the Department of Agriculture stands on its written testimony, strongly supporting this measure, and we're available to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Nicholas Comerford from uh, CTAR, UH. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair Committee. We also provided written testimony. We stand on that testimony in strong and are available for questions. Thank you. Okay, mahalo. Ryan Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support of this measure. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Nicole Galassi, Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Thank you, Chair Gabbard. Uh, Hawaii Cattlemen's Council stands on our written testimony in support. Mahalo. Uh, Micah Munakata, Ulupono. Thank you, Chair. Ulupono will stand on its testimony in strong support. Thank you. Mahalo. Uh, John Garibaldi from the Local Food Coalition. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, John Garibaldi with the Local Food Coalition. Uh, we stand on our written testimony in support. Thank you. Great. Thank you, John. And next, Meredith Buck. Hello, I'm Meredith Buck here. I uh, want to stand on my written testimony and strong support. Great. Thank you, Meredith. Members, any questions for the testifiers? Okay, I have a question for Department of Ag. Uh, Phyllis uh, or, or your staff, are you there? Yeah, okay. Yes. 
Uh, are there any specific projects, projects that Department of Ag has lined up if this bill is to pass? Uh, I'd like to ask um, that you allow Morris Atta, deputy, to come forward. Uh, he's been working on um, the most recent project that he can explain as an example. It, it involves um, an aquaculture um, project. Okay. Thank you, Phyllis. Hello, Morris. Hello, Chair Gravitt. Uh, Morris Atta, Department of Agriculture. Well, we have uh, a number of um, projects in the works, but um, some of the projects that are ongoing <clears throat> that have been uh, questioned uh, include, um, you know, supporting facilities like marsh, um, uh, aggregating uh, facilities in Honalo, um, slaughterhouse operations. Um, we're also trying to um, uh, work with ADC to get an aquaculture operation. Um, you know, supporting an existing aquaculture op operation. A lot of these, um, there, um, you know, th there's ambiguities in the statute about what we can and cannot do. What this measure does is it clarifies that all of these um, non-traditional, non-growing uh, type agricultural activities are covered under our purview and that we are, we're allowed to proceed, uh, you know, with, without it being questioned. Okay, thank you, Morris. Okay, and uh, let the record note there are 27 who uh, testified in support, none opposed, and no comments. Okay, moving on to SC4, SCR44, uh, and SR30. Uh, this, uh, this resident is declaring a climate emergency and requesting statewide collaboration toward an immediate just transition and emergency mobilization effort to restore a safe plan. Uh, there are 82 in support, none opposed, and one comment. And let's see here. We will. First testifier is Melody Aduha from the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Melody here. Hi, Chair. Melody is not in this meeting today. Thank you. Uh, David Mullenix from Our Revolution Hawaii. Aloha, uh, Senator Gabbard and uh, committee. Um, my name is Dave Monix with uh, Arbor Vision Hawaii, representing our 7,000 members and supporters statewide and strong support of this resolution. I think that uh, this is critically important. Uh, what happened here recently in Texas highlights the importance of why we need to pass a resolution like this. They had sub-zero temperatures there in Texas and uh, parents woke up to find their children frozen in their beds. This is horrific to happen in the United States. And that was done because of government action. The legislature there hadn't prepared their energy grid for that extreme weather. Here in Hawaii, we have the opposite problem of extreme heat. And when we have extreme heat here, it could also kill off our component and those who are the most vulnerable. Um, so over the years uh, here in the state of Hawaii, we've had multiple effective, significant um, legislation would have made a difference about climate change here, uh, but those bills were often killed off by special interest groups who are more focused on their special interests rather than overall go to the community. And so it's that time for that is over. We all need to start working together. This resolution accomplishes two things. It accomplished the uh, legislature and the government is letting people know, making them aware that we are already in a climate crisis and we need to respond effectively and now. And the other thing is we need to get everyone working together. We need the uh, government agencies, businesses, unions, churches, community groups, all working together for the betterment of all. And this resolution is, is attempting to do that, to alert everyone that we need to work together. We know that we can do this because of our response to COVID. I want to thank Senator Gabbert for his leadership and for the committee members who support this. Mahalo Nui Loba for your consideration. Aloha. Mahalo, David. Next is Colton Ching from Hawaiian Electric. Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihara, members of the committee. My name is Colton Ching and I'm testifying on behalf of the Hawaiian Electric Company, offering some comments to both resolutions. Uh, first, we applaud these resolutions recognition that effective climate change mitigation and adaptation goes beyond an RPS mandate for the electricity sector and instead requires a statewide effort and a coordinated effort involving all parts of the state's economy. 
We also appreciate the resolution's connection that effective climate change response requires education as a foundational effort to raise awareness and create alignment of efforts to respond to changes in our climate. We do have uh, a, a few concerns about the resolutions as currently drafted. Uh, in consideration of the passage, uh, we ask that, we, that these resolutions please ensure uh, alignment between both of these resolutions and the state's current 100% RPS mandate. Uh, for example, uh, these resolutions as currently written would prohibit biomass energy project, which is a qualifying renew renewable technology in the state's RPS law and is an effective renewable energy technology in reducing the state's dependence on fossil fuels. In addition, although Hawaiian Electric is committed to our state's 100% uh, RPS goal exhibited an achievement of a 35% RPS this past year, a prohibition on oil and gas projects would jeopardize our ability to provide reliable electric service during our transition to 100% RPS, as well as our ability to provide emergency power follow following major storms and disasters. Thank you, uh, committee, for this opportunity to testify. Thank you. Mahalo, Colton. Uh, next is Matthew Geyer from Faith Action Environmental Justice Task Force. Aloha, Chair, members of the committee. Aloha. Faith Action Environmental Justice Task Force stands in support of this measure. And I'd like to respond a little bit to uh, Colton Ching. Uh, education is very important. Um, however, we have less than 10 years to fix this problem. So educating people now, um, it's a little too late. We do need to do it, but we really need strong actions. And so this is a good start, saying, saying that we have an emergency. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention about biomass is that, yes, we'll be using less fossil fuels, but we'll still be burning things and putting stuff in the air that's causing climate change. So biomass is not the way to go. It's gonna still cause climate change. We're gonna still be having these problems. So once again, supporting this measure and thank you for all you've done to um, support our environment. Aloha. Aloha, Matthew. Next is Ted Boland from the Climate Protectors Hawaii. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, members of the committee. The Climate Protectors of Hawaii are in strong support of this resolu these resolutions. Uh, we are facing, as Matt Geyer just said, we're facing a crisis here. We have a very limited amount of time in which to respond, or there will be an, an increasingly uh, disastrous climate situation in Hawaii. We are on the forefront. It's like an island state, and we have to lead and take action now. This uh, These resolutions, um, represent a great first step. We have to recognize the emergency and get people aware of the problems that we're facing in order to take the big steps that we need to take, uh, some of which are laid out in this uh, res in, in resolution SCR 44. Uh, the last thing I would mention is that this resol these resolutions complement the other resolutions that we're going to be uh, visiting in a couple moments. They're not either or, I think they are a complementary uh, pair of resolutions um, which should be adopted. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you, Ted. Next is Christopher Dean. Hello, Senators, and thank you for taking this resolution so seriously. We are indeed in a crisis. And if you ask the chair of Harvard's uh, Atmospheric Chemistry Department, you'll see that we really have about five years, according to him, to make drastic changes to the chemical composition of our atmosphere. That's why biomass is not an effective solution because it takes decades for the trees to suck the carbon back out of the atmosphere. And by then it's too late. If you wanna see um, massive, evidence of our climate emergency right now, look at the oceans, our reefs are dying. We're losing our beaches. And as the ocean level rises, we will have any more beaches left. No one will come to Hawaii to see mud and broken concrete and rebar and dead coral reefs. 
And also, they'll be dealing with their own emergencies because this is a global crisis. I would like to also add that if you're really serious about tackling this problem, which is the worst crisis this planet has seen since the meteor hit 65 million years ago, what you'll do is you'll bring back net metering. Because when we had net metering here in the state, you couldn't believe how fast people were putting solar on their roofs. It was unbelievable. And just the, in the five years, it, the system was overloaded with solar energy. Plus, commercial, um, like private multi-source inputs like that reduce the impact on undeveloped land. And so commercial businesses, parking lots and homes can provide our energy. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Christopher, for your testimony. Next is Sarah DeGracia. Sarah is not in chair. Okay, thank you. And Ronald Riley. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Garrett for uh, introducing this measure and thank you for holding this hearing, which is um, uh, so important. And I stand uh, in so strong support of this resolution, uh, both as an individual and a member of Citizens Climate Lobby, which is lobbying for national carbon pollution pricing legislation. Um, I'd like to refer to comments in my written testimony and begin with a quote from singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen. Leonard said in a song, we asked for signs, the signs were sent. And I believe the signs have been sent, uh, Chair and members of the committee. And I refer specifically to the Hawaii Greenhouse Gas Emissions Report of 2016, which was published in December of 2019, which has the most recent figures that I was able to find about the key metric, which is how much pollution is Hawaii causing annually. And the figures are 20 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent every year. That was uh, uh, steady for the last years that were measured, which were 2010, 2015, and 2016. And so unless we are getting those figures down, we're not doing enough. And I'd like to say that this is a great first step to admit that we have this huge problem. And in relation to burning trees, I would say these are not sustainable. And we should, uh, although I applaud Helco's effort for renewables, burning trees is not it. Thank you very much. And I urge your support. Thank you very much, Ronald. Okay, uh, members, uh, let, let me note that there were, on SCR 44, there were 82 opposed, excuse, excuse me, 82 in support, none opposed, with one comment. And then our SR 30, there were 63 in support and none opposed. And so for those who testified on SR 30, since it's the same resolution, you'll not need to testify again. And if there's any questions, Concerns from members? If not, we shall move on to SCR 45. Uh, SCR 45, requesting the convening of a working group to examine and make recommendations regarding gleaning in state and county parks. Okay, we have Kurt Cottrell from DLNR in opposition. Kurt, are you here? I am. Good afternoon, um, Chair Gabbard, uh, Vice Chair, members of the committee, uh, Kurt Cottrell, Administrator for the Division of State Parks. While we support the intent, we, we do uh, stand on our testimony in opposition. Uh, however, I would like to offer a little bit of color that may be of interest to the committee. First of all, thank you for putting this in the title. I had to look up gleaning, and so now I finally understand the genesis of the word gleaning. <laughs> um, so that was an interesting thing as we tried to figure out what the reso wanted us to do, but- I had, I had to look it up too, Kurt. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I gleaned an answer when I, when I looked it up, but what we are doing, and, and this is a result of the pandemic and uh, budgetary constraints, we, um, 
we have a large budget for coconut tree trimming, you know, and we typically try to do two passes in our state park systems per year, mainly to avoid the, the liability and, and public safety issue of, of coconuts falling. During the pandemic, as we were evaluating certain cost elements of you know, core functions and what we could defer, what we needed to spend, um, we did come in contact, and I apologize, I don't remember the name of the organization, it's based on Oahu, but it is primarily devoted to um, you know, the recycling and use of coconuts. And so our, our interpretive program has, has some preliminary discussions with them. And you know, we're looking at possibly offsetting the cost of our coconut tree trimming by having a partnership with this organization to simply have them harvest coconuts. But as you know, it's, it's a skill set. You, know, you need the gear, the training and, and whatnot to, to get the material out before it becomes hazardous. So that I think is, is kind of part of how I understand the intent. We are you know, trying to become innovative in how we do our management. And you know, coconuts are a commodity that you know, we could definitely put back into the community. All right, mahalo, Kurt. Sure. And there was, that's the only testimony. There were no, tes no testimony in support. Uh, any questions, members? We'll move on to the next measure, and that's SCR 46 and SR 31, uh, requesting the Department of Ag to establish a Kona, Ar Kona Area Agricultural Working Group to promote agriculture, economic development, and housing. First up is Phyllis Shimupokuro Geyser from the Department of Ag. Thank you, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, the department offers comments and um, with strong concerns. And I respectful, respectfully say that um, because we have um, serious uh, reservations regarding our, de our department's ability to effectively address the stated objectives and meet the expectations of the resolution. Um, we lack the resources, staffing, and expertise to oversee this effort. Uh, we respectfully uh, ask um, that um, the more appropriate agency would be the County of Hawaii as um, they to lead the effort as they have a Kona Community Development Plan. Uh, we respectfully suggest that the county be requested to identify what it believes to be key issues, constraints, and priorities in economic development, housing, agriculture, and other priorities with the input of the agencies and organizations that are identified in this resolution. Uh, Department of Agriculture could provide input to the agricultural aspects of the study uh, without being burdened with oversight of other issues such as energy, housing, homesteading, wastewater treatment, potable use, and transportation, which uh, the department has no expertise. And we also um, identified um, what we estimate the minimum time would take and um, what kind of resources might be required. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phyllis. Okay, and then um, no other testifiers. We did have two individuals who are in support of this uh, measure. Any questions? We will move on to the final measure on the one o'clock agenda, SCR 61 and SR 43. Uh, reaffirming the state's commitment to co combat climate change and prioritize climate change legislation. And first up is David Smith from DLNR. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, uh, members of the committee, David Smith, Administrator with the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony and support, and we had some comments, there was uh, some numbers in the in the budget discussion for DLNR that uh, we had made some edits to. Uh, if you've got any questions, be glad to answer. Thank you. Mahalo, David. And next is Henry Curtis from Life of the Land. Henry is not available, Chair. Okay, thank you. Members, any questions? Sit on the testifiers. Wait a minute, no, I'm sorry, we have Couple more, Melody Aduha from the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party. 
she with us in support? She is not here, Chair. Thank you. Ted Boland from Climate Protectors Hawaii. Thank you, Chair. The, yes, the Climate Protectors of Hawaii are in strong support of these resolutions as well. As I said a moment ago, uh, these are complementary to the Emergency Declaration Resolution SCR 44 and SR 30. And so uh, I think if the committee were to pass both of these, that would send a strong signal to the community uh, of the emergency that we're facing and need to start addressing right now. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Ted. Members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, if we could go into the breakout room for some discussion. One. Okay, reveni uh, reconvening the 1 p.m. AEN uh, hearing uh, on a few, few measures. We'll start off with HB 817 HD2 requires each state department to ensure that a certain percentage of the produce purchased by that department is locally grown and report to the legislature on each department's progress toward meeting locally grown produce benchmarks. Okay, having uh, conferred with the members, uh, members, this measure would definitely provide our local farmers additional markets for their products. And so my recommendation would be to pass HB 817 HD2 with amendments. Uh, from Ulupono's uh, testimony, we'll do the following. We'll replace, quote, as measured by the cost of the produce, unquote, throughout the bill with quote, as measured by the percent of the total food cost, unquote. And then we'll also replace, quote, locally grown produce, unquote, throughout the bill with, quote, fresh local agricultural products and local value added processed agricultural or food product, unquote. And then we'll also add definitions for, quote, fresh local agricultural product, unquote, uh, quote, local value added processed agricultural or food product, unquote and primary agricultural product, unquote. And as was brought up in the testimony, uh, these definitions are consistent with the Department of Ag's uh, Seal of Quality Program, and there's also some tech amendments. Any concerns? Okay. Um, so um, I'll go ahead and take the vote. The chair's recommendation will be to pass SB 817 HD2 with amendments. Uh, Chair votes aye, Vice Chair Nishihara. Uh, aye. Uh, Senator Rhodes? Aye. Senator Ocasio? Aye. Senator Favela? Okay, uh, excuse, the measure passes. Moving on to House Bill 871, authorizes the uh, SD1, excuse me, HB 871 HD1, authorizes the Department of Ag to plan, design, construct, operate, manage, maintain, repair, demolish, and remove infrastructure on any lands under the jurisdiction of the department to support and promote agriculture. Establishes the Agricultural Enterprise Program, establishes the Agricultural Enterprise Special Fund requires the Board of Agriculture to annu annually report an accounting of non-agricultural park lessees to the legislature. Okay, uh, members uh, on this, we passed a Senate version. Uh, it was SB 1248, but since HB 871 crossed first, this will be the vehicle. And uh, it gives Department of Ag the flexibility that it needs to adapt to technological changes and adopt innovations to assist our farmers. So the chair's recommendation would be to pass HB 871 HD1 with tech amendments. Any discussion? Okay. So chair votes aye, Vice Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela, excuse, the measure passes. 
Okay, moving on to SCR 44 uh, and SR 30, uh, declaring a climate emergency and requesting statewide collaboration toward an immediate just transition and emergency mobilization effort to restore a safe climate. Members, this will allow the legislature to make a strong statement by declaring a climate emergency. And as you can see from the testimony, there's a lot of public support for this statement. So the chair's recommendation will be to pass SCR 44 and SR 30 with tech amendments. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Excused. The measure passes. Moving on to SCR 45, requesting the convening of a working group to examine and make recommendations regarding cleaning in state and county parks. Um, members, this resolution was requested by a middle, 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 excuse me, middle school student uh, named Ari Walsh. Uh, the chair appreciates the intent of the resolution, but based on the fact that we did not receive any testimony in support, we'll be deferring this resolution indefinitely. Uh, moving on to SCR 46 and SR 31, requesting the Department of Ag to establish a Kona Area Agricultural Working Group to promote agriculture, economic development, and housing. Uh, members, while I appreciate the Department of Ag's concerns, uh, this reso would simply create a working group that would report back to the ledge before the 2022 legislature on a plan for the Kona area with regards to agriculture, affordable housing, and economic development. And so in this chair's mind, this would take staff time, but it doesn't need a $500,000 appropriation as suggested by the Department of Ag. So the chair's recommendation would be to pass um, SCR 46 and SR 31 with tech amendments. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> okay, chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Excused, moving on. And the measure passes. SCR 61, SR 43, reaffirming the state's commitment to combat climate change and prioritize climate change legislation. Uh, members, uh, the chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments. I will accept the suggested clarifying amendments by the Office of Planning and DLNR that appear in their written testimony to improve the wording of the resolution. And there's also some tech amendments. Any discussion? Hearing none, the, the chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela is excused. The measure passes. And that concludes the one o'clock agenda. Mahalo members and the public. Aloha.